Uh, welcome back to uh, Edmonton, the Alberta capital, hosting uh, the 19th Oilers game this season. Time to play Safeway's million dollar score and win. If any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game, Damian Ellers of Edmonton could win one million dollars. Great timing. Shop at Safeway and you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. We know who were the offensive heroes on the part of the Edmonton Oilers when it comes to goals in their most recent game against Dallas. Uh, deuces were wild for Taylor Hall and Mark Arcabello. In the case of Taylor Hall, three career hat tricks and you had a feeling almost Kevin and Drew that he would get a fourth this past weekend against Dallas. An opportunity for him tonight. It's the final meeting between Arizona and Edmonton. Let's meet the starting goaltenders. Brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's the official copy of the NHL. On the 23rd, Ben Strivens makes his 23rd start of the season. He faces the Coyotes for the seventh time in his career and fourth time this year. And at the other end, it's Devin Dubnik. He came on in relief of Mike Smith last night in Vancouver, gave up three goals on 29 shots in a 7-1 loss. It was Arizona's third straight loss on the road. The Oilers are hoping to make it four here tonight and get a win for Todd Nelson. Todd Nelson talking today about what he hopes for his team, what he wants them to see them doing. The one thing he keeps talking about, though, you got to keep focused on the ta next task at hand, and he knows that one game can turn things around, especially the mood in the locker room. Top line that gets the start, as you might expect, along with Schultz and Hunt on the blue line against Antoine Vermette, the veteran Shane Doan, and the medic or at Bodker. McCulloch and Ekman Larson are on the blue line to start for the Coyotes. Losing his stick to Shane Dolan. It comes all the way back to the blue line. Opportunity right in front for Vermette, but he lost an edge. Nugent Hopkins. Pass for Purcell gets by him. Keith Yandel will go and pick it up. Yandel leads the team in assists and points. Stone. Here's the puck around the board. Schultz waiting for it there. Chipchura in the corner. Chipchura along with Moss and Reeder. Tobias Reeder switching with Martin Erak. The game last night on their line. Says Chipchura gets it back to Yandel at the point. Throws a shot towards the net. It went off. Boyd Gordon. Moss works it out from the corner. Plays it back to the point. Stone steps into a shot. And that one whistles wide. Traffic in front for the Coyotes. Everly. Backhand, Perron, in pursuit, David Perron gets double team as the puck squirts free, and it's picked up by Keith Yandel. Yandel playing in his 419th straight game. Who's the Coyotes in scoring this year? That shows you that the Coyotes need some scoring from the front forwards. Taylor Hall leads the orders in goals, he's got 10. Sam Gagne, the Martin Erat along with Hansel. This is Gagne. Sharp angle shot, and he somehow put that one in. Sam Gagne. Why ever a guy needed that for the Arizona Coyotes is Sam Gagne. An effective breakout and attack by the Coyotes. Three guys pushing the pace. Coming up together, a three on two where you're driving to the net and backing off the defense. The back check happens, and you think it looks like you might have him, and then the puck just gets centered towards. Boy, it doesn't look like anybody touched it. Gagne's just going to throw it hard. He's just hoping for something to happen. And that is one where I cannot tell you where it goes in. That's a tough one. From the overhead. That just goes five hole. Just goes five hole. Don't have the paddle down. Don't have the legs closed. And it just goes five hole. A it just it shows you it's never a bad play to put it at the feet of the goalie and also it's always a good thing to drive the net sam gagne didn't have a goal in his last six games he's got four on the season now and his team has a one nothing lead martin erat picks up the helper he's got nine and the orders are down one here's fain with a shot that goes wide platform trying to keep it in against gagne it comes to erat drops it for gagne Joining the rush is Ekman Larson, but it's Gagne with a shot. Big rebound to the corner. Ekman Larson plays it behind the net for Erat. Erat throws it right out in front. Stick saved by Strivens. Ekman Larson, another shot. Strivens the save. Pushed back to the point. Hunter Murphy chops at it. The puck goes straight up in the air. And picked up now by Clefbaugh. you got to think this is exactly the start 
the Coyotes wanted after last night's drubbing against the Vancouver Canucks. Second time they have given up seven goals in a game. Leon Dreisaitl back in the lineup. He gets a shot, and Devin Dubik makes his first save. Let's go back and look at the goal one more time. I like the fact that Gagne drives wide with speed. I like the fact you get guys going the net. I don't like how the puck goes in. I, this just cannot go in if you're Ben Scrivens. The Oilers coaches have given Ben Scrivens the job. They basically said, you're the number one guy. Number one guys can't let that puck in. Dreisaitl wins the draw. Hunt with a shot steered aside by Devin Dubnik. Hunt again at the point. Lines, fires another blast. Big rebound in front. And an opportunity there. Hopping over the stick of Neil Yakupov. From B. Part of the fourth line with Joe Vitale and Brandon McMillan. This is Crombeen at the blue line. He will give it to Murphy. Tries to get it towards the net. Blocked by Yakupov. Neil Yakupov plays it to the corner. Joe Vitale stops it. Crombeen going after it against Schultz and Dreisaitl. Picked up now and calmly sent out by Hunt. Tyler Pitlick bounces that one in and then he's going to head to the bench. The owners won't see action again until Saturday. They will be in Calgary. Arizona will be at home to Anaheim after the Christmas break. Doan's centering pass is picked off. He gets it back again. Shane Doan lays it off the end boards. Bill Bunker, along with Antoine Vermette, will tie up Ferris. The puck does score free, and it's Nugent Hopkins who came in to help out. Purcell to Hall. Hall backhands it slowly. Dubnik stops it, and then he's going to play it himself, and he gets it to Shane Doan. Doan rips it around the boards, but he can't get it by Ferris. Dubnik it right back in. Hall will pick it up on the far side. Taylor Hall, a backhand. Yandel intercepts and throws it to an open wing. Arizona, four and six, and their last ten trips out of the desert. This is game three of a three-game road trip. Mikel Bacher throws it slowly in. Scriven stops it. Hands it around the boards, but Gagne is there to pick it off. Petrie has some room, and he will get the puck out by flipping it high and down the ice. And that's going to come back on an icing call. Keys to the game are brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Something Todd Nelson has been talking about and showing on the ice and practices. He wants his team to play an up-tempo game from the start of the game till the end of it. I'm not sure he's got that yet. And for the Arizona Coyotes, you saw it for Dave Tippett's team. They get that five-man four check going. The defense gets up. They hem teams in. Think about the second period in the desert when the Oilers were in Glendale last. It was awesome to watch. Everybody working together on that four check. Martin Hansel won that draw. Murphy tipped in. Erat at the top of the slot. Got a stick on it. And it's 2-0 for Arizona. I think, I think Victor Foss might be coming in right now. This is a tough one for Ben Scrivens because it's a horrible screen in front and it bounces or it's deflected. As the play works back up to the top of the zone, Check everybody out in front. It bounces and it's in front of the net. It's Oscar Kleffbaum. Oh my, Oscar, that's a perfect, perfect screen by Oscar Kleffbaum. And a goalie change is coming as Victor Foss replaces Ben Scrivens, who gives up two goals on two shots. You know, uh, five minutes in. Sorry, partner. In, in Detroit, when Johan Franson stands in front of the net, when Thomas Holstrom used to stand in front of the net, Mike Babcock and his coaching staff say, we want you to play bad goalie. In other words, stand there and let it go by you. But right there, they Oscar Kleffbaum played bad goalie. <laughs> Didn't do Ben Scrivens any favors. Two points on the night for Martin Erat. Murphy and Reeder get the helpers five minutes in. And Victor Foss. Five minutes. These actions by his last start was back on December the 12th in Anaheim. Chip Chura turned aside. David Perron starts away. Perron backhands it in, and that's offside. So let's go back to the goal again because there's more that happening on that. Marty Erat with the deflection. Check it out. 
Martin Erat gets a stick on it and it drops between the legs of Oscar Clefbaum and goes in. You'll see a great look at it right here. Wrister to the net. There it drops down, goes between the legs. Ben Scriven sees nothing but 84 blue in front of him. And the Coyotes get off to the start that they desperately wanted. The Oilers, not so much. Trying to prevent the sweep at the hands of the Coyotes, a division opponent. And this is the last game in the season series. Well, you know, last last game, John Shannon talked about bounce back. Yeah. Teams, good teams, especially the Oilers now, with the way that they things have gone. Hold on for a minute. Nugent Hopkins works it towards the net. Dubnik covers up as Hall flies through. 2-0 lead for the Coyotes. Rogers Oilers hockey right here on Sportsman. It was a mere number of days before Sam Gagne was married that he was also traded. Traded. Now, we previously introduced you last year to his fiancée, now wife, uh, Rachel Linke. Uh, Rachel is a doctor. She's on a one-year residency, so the two have been separated this entire season. But when the Coyotes go home after this game, Sam will stay in Edmonton for the holidays as it's his turn to make a house call. <laughs> oh, well done, Gene. There go, Gino. That's a good one. Schultz. His shot is blocked. Luke Gazdick in front. Luke Gazdick playing because Matt Hendricks is not feeling well. So Hendricks out of the lineup. Gazdick getting an opportunity. Score! Back from the point. And it's a 2-1 game. Well, before the break word, I was rudely interrupted by a commercial. I was going to talk about John Shannon and John talking about bounce back. But the owners have been able to show that in recent games. Well, here's a little bit of a bounce back goal. Traffic in front. Zbigniew McCallick does a great job. McCallick does a great job all the time to, that blocking shots and getting in front and making sure on this one, well, it deflects off somebody. I don't think it went off Zbigniew, but it goes off of somebody. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Is that B.J. Crumpy? B.J. Crumpy in the slot. Or Joe Vitale. I think it was Joe Vitale at the very end. Number 14 is the guy that deflects it, so. And Justin Schultz will take it. His third goal of the year and third goal at home. <laughs> this is the, uh, the season of giving, yes, but you don't want to give goals to the opposition team. 6-18, the time of the goal, and... Uh, you're right, it is Crom Bean who gets his stick on, I believe. Right up in the slot, you're going to see it. That is yeah. 44, so that might be Joe Vitale. It's 44, not 14. Shot pass, look good for Luke Gazdick, and then B.J. Crom Bean doing what you want to do. Get your stick in passing lanes. Unfortunately, he deflects it into his own net. And Justin oh. Schultz didn't have a goal in 26 games coming in. He breaks that, and the orders are on the board. Foss steers that aside. 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four now. The shots and three goals. Get your back down. By Dreisaitl. Foss steers that away. Yandel steps in, drops it back to Moss, who's covering at the point. Fires a shot that is blocked by Pittman. To the near side it comes, Michael Stone. Takes a hit. The owners are able to get it out. It's Pitlick at center. Chips it in, he'll chase it. Button hook, Yakupov joins him along with Dreisaitl. Yakupov from the corner, tied up there by Tobias Reeder. Michael Stone. Moves it ahead, but Hansel can't get outside his own blue line, and the Coyotes regroup. Hansel has it again at center this time. Turns and just fires the puck in. He is with Gagne and Iraq. Just out of the reach of Hall. Kicked in by McCulloch. McCulloch. His 32nd birthday today. We have our first winner tonight in our score and win contest. The Apple Safeway and Mott's Garden Cocktail. Tara Samuel of Edmonton has won the Garvin Burb Elite HD Action Camera. Congratulations, Tara, on the goal by Justin Schultz. A 2-1 score eight minutes into the game. Should not surprise anybody when the Coyotes and the Oilers go at it as they as the graphic shows you, give up the most first period goals in the National Hockey League. Three goals on nine shots. Jack ah! Jones got it. Right through the crease at the Larson shot. That one blocked by Jordan Everly. Everly 
Gordon and Perron. David Perron will give it to Schultz. Pass intended for Gordon got by him. And they will bring it back into their territory. Hey, hey, Excellent structure by the Phoenix Coyotes on their forecheck and then in their neutral zone forecheck. They do an outstanding job skating in straight lines, taking away passing lanes, coming back to the middle. Dave Tippett, you look at his numbers against the Oilers, and uh, David Amber already showed you how long it's been since the Oilers beat the Coyotes. I had hair back then. That's how long it's been. <laughs> That's not pretty true. <laughs> 11 22 to go in the first period, and Steve Pinizzato dropping the gloves with Kyle Chipchura. Pinizzato and Chipchura. For Steve Pinizzato, his fourth fight of the season. Kyle Chipchura's got that right arm tied up pretty good. Steve's trying to get it loose. He does now. He fought. Oh, it's a Steedo. Last night in Vancouver. A second game, a second fight for Kyle Chipchura. And a guy a little more in his weight class in the form of Steve Pinizzato. This period brought to you by Sport Check. This holiday season, don't give just any gift. Give the gift of sport. Let's check out on the right side. As Steve Pinizzato comes right out right away and confronts Cal Chichir, and they just drop the glove. Steve looking to get something going for his team, get some energy. Cal Chichir doesn't want any of it, but he ends up not having a choice, and they start to throw down. Pinizzato now has 30 penalty minutes on the season. This is his 17th game. Craig McTavish with the earphone in the IFB as we call it in the biz he's up talking he is talking to Rocky Thompson and also in connection with Miles Fee the video coach in the dressing room if he wants to see something he can get it fed right to him what's that mean interrupted fullback is that what IFB yeah. stands for sure <laughs> yeah you didn't need to get technical I was trying to sound like the smart guy give a little inside info and I get technical Anzel wins that draw Shot from the point, doesn't make it through. Anzel battling the with Gordon for the loose spot. Gordon wins it out Steven to the center. Five minutes each for fighting. Chopped at, at the blue line and brought back in and offside. Coyotes penalty trip Chura. Well, when you look at the Arizona Coyotes, and you heard the pregame to talk about goaltending, that's really when you look at what this team does, they haven't got a lot of scoring from up front. They haven't got a lot of scoring, period. But Devin Dubnik's been their best goaltender, but they need Mike Smith to be their best goaltender. He's the guy they've invested in. And Mike Smith this year is just not got it. He's just lost it somehow. He's got to work his way back. I remember Kelly Rudy talking about it when the goaltenders go through this, and he went through it many times. The fact that you just start to doubt yourself. Mike Smith has lost 15 games. That is second most in the league. It's amazing, isn't it? He's their guy. Dubnik covers up with Teddy Herschel right there. But nice thing is, Devin Dubnik has rebounded this season after a real tough last season. He has got some help from Sean Burke, who's done an outstanding job working with him. This against the Edmonton Oilers. Talk about kryptonite. Wow. 61 wins for Devin Dubnik in an Oiler uniform. And two in a Coyotes. Tobias Reeder flips it in. Petrie will go back and get it. The Ferrets to the middle for Nugent Hopkins to Hall. Hall dumps that puck in. Dubnik sweeps it around the boards. Up to Larson waiting for it on the far side. Joe Vitale had left the zone. The pass for Moss didn't work. And it's coming back on an icing call against the Coyotes. This is the Sports Select Legends comeback kid, and he's proof that sometimes winning just works in your favor. Get your game on with pools. What the owners need is to find some space. Right now, they're slow on breaking the puck out because the Arizona Coyote is doing an outstanding job at getting everybody in the space. Rysettle wins the puck right back to Hunt, who throws it off the end boards. It sits out in front, but Kolick steers it away. Moss backtracked by Yakupov. The orders. Yakupov 
with Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl turns in the corner. Centering pass didn't make it out. It sits at the side of the net. Good McClane to cover it up. He can't do it. Yakubov back to Petrie. Slots it. And that one went off Pitlick and just wide. Yakubov gets it back again, but he gave it away to Sam Gagne. Gagne moving in with Iraq. Gagne. Drop pass. Handle the shot. Boss the save. And the rebound cleared and Pitlick starts back for the Oilers. Dreisaitl gets to center, wants to dump that puck in. The Oilers want to get a change in with just over nine and a half minutes left to go in the first period. The Oilers have been involved in 18 one-goal games. They've gotten points in 11 of those games. Vandal chops at it. Boyd Gordon flips it down the ice slowly. An opportunity now for Emily. There's Dubnik. But he can't get it by Perron. Has to scramble back in the net. Emily back to the point. Left ball. Wide. Fires up last. Perron looking for the rebound. But it's picked up by Yandel. Oh, oh, oh. Michael Locker. Puts it in. Boyd gets there first. Boyd Gordon. Wants to get it out. Can't get it by Shane Doan. Doan. Throws it towards the net. Fane to that behind the cage. The near side, and it's Bodger. The short pass to Vermet back to the point. Murphy thought about the one time. Instead goes across to Gormley, who gives it to Doan. High slot shot. Didn't make it through. Doan follows up. Gives it to Bodger. Vermet battling in front. Here's Murphy with a wrist shot. Blocked by Yakubov. Back in. A sharp save there by Faust as Vermet was going down. He got pretty good steam on that backhand. Certainly time, was. Time, time. Connor Murphy with a pass to Joe Vitale. Joe Vitale snaps a shot, and that one rises over top of the net. McMillan behind the net. Brandon McMillan with Stone in the end along the blue line. This is Stone pitching in. Avoids the big hit from Gaston. Gets it to McMillan, who turned it over to Brad Hunt. That line hit and started, though, as Hunt is chased back to his own zone. Archibello comes in to help. He turned it over to McMillan. McMillan back to the point here. Stone with a shot through traffic. The rebound sits there, and Everly gets it to Archibello. Luke Gaston in pursuit along with Mark Archibello. Archibello goes down hard. Gaston as well, along with Stone. The puck's still free. Here's Everly. Fix the shot. He let it go, and Dubnik got a piece of it. Schultz from the corner. Throws it around the boards. Arcabello centering pass just out of the reach of Luke Gastic, but backtracked there by Everly. He lost it to Vitali, and Vitali wants to relieve the pressure and send it down the ice. No icing on the play. So the Coyotes will get a change in. Shots are even at seven apiece. Here comes Ryan Nugent Hopkins off the boards for Teddy Purcell, who dumps it in. Bodkin to Hansel. Hansel off the boards for Martin Erat. Erat to Gagne. Sam Gagne. And brought in offside by Martin Erick. Well, you talked about the season of giving. Watch this. Two shots for the price of one. In the sister is arriving from Boston as she will be here for the Christmas holidays. He's one of the newest Oilers, just like Teddy Purcell. And as a result of all this, David Perron has taken on the role of inviting anyone who wants to come over to his house uh, for Christmas dinner. He is a big fan of Christmas, has the lights and all the ornaments uh, set up inside and outside of his house. And of course, on Christmas Eve, they will be eating turkey at six o'clock sharp because, you know, dinner will be her on time. Wow. Wow. She's a He's on fire today. So Brad Hunt and Mark Arcabello pick up helpers on the goal by Justin Schultz. Arcabello with three points in his last two games. Perron from the corner. Everly shot goes over top of the net. Picked up by Hansel. They'll play it back to McCulloch around the other side for Erat. He's checked. Perron's got it. David Perron, nice move around Erat. Out in front, it comes for Dreisaitl, but McCulloch was there to clear it to the corner. The orders keep control. David Perron, drop pass for Everly, goes back to Perron. Perron trying to get away from Erat. Fain ready for a shot. Everly taken in Oof. heavily into the boards by Oliver Ekman Larson. Gave him a shot as he got up, and Ekman Larson collecting himself. Penalty coming up and now. a penalty on the way. Yakupov snaps a shot. That one rises over top of the net. Yakupov goes after it again. Pass for Pitlick out in front was touched. Now the Oilers will get a power play. Yeah. 
Ekman, Larson, and Everly coming together in the boards. With Martin Erat in the box, a great opportunity for Edmonton to tie this hockey game. The Oilers in the past have done shirts off our backs promotion to raise money. But this year they decided to do something different, and it was Christmas sweaters. Each player had a Christmas sweater with his name and number on it, and then they were signed by the players. They were auctioned off this past Sunday, and it was a huge success. As in all, going into the Christmas break, the Oilers Community Foundation has raised over a quarter of a million dollars. That money will be dispersed to many different charities across oil country. That is a nice looking sweater. I don't get the ugly sweater thing. The orders do get a power play. Gene talked about Eratty in the box for hooking. The orders hey, one Arizona. for one against Dallas, two for 13 against Arizona. And Arizona gave up three power play goals in Vancouver. Drew, they allowed 29. That is the most power play goals allowed in the NHL. will try and take advantage of that and tie the hockey game. As Everly shoots the puck in, Devin Dubnik stops it. He plays it to the boards. Hunt gets over there and gets it to Hall. Hall got the power play goal in the game against Dallas. Here, he gave it to Doan, who sends it down the ice. The majority of the Oilers' goals on the power play have been scored here at Rexall. 11 of the 13. Everly, the button hooker against Ekman Larson to Hunt. And the puck goes over the stick of Purcell. Picked up there by Gormley. And Gormley sends it the length of the ice. Down to 54 seconds left to go. And the penalty to Martin Erak. Yakupov, Dreisaitl, Perron. Along with Petrie and Schultz. Dreisaitl moving in quickly. Dreisaitl. Nice. Played it right through the legs of Yandel. He's got the puck back again. Dreisaitl to the point it goes. Schultz waiting for it there. Petrie steps into a shot. Ticked by Dreisaitl. And a save made by Devin Dubnik. Gormley. One more time. He'll send it down the ice. But that was strong for Dreisaitl. Looks like he is rested up and ready to play tonight. And watched last game from up top going, oh, okay, I get it. Here he comes again. Yeah. Leon Dreisaitl. Drops it back for Petrie. Petrie give it to Schultz. Pick back to Perron. Let it go. Dubnik the save. Five seconds left to go with the man advantage. Petrie to Yakupov. Cross ice. Drives out right out in front. He rats out of the box. One shot for the Oilers on that power play. McCulloch gets checked. The puck comes back to Yakupov. Nail Yakupov to Petrie. Across the Fane with a wrist shot. That went off Vitaly. Petrie's got it. Fane's got it one more time. Yakupov snaps the shot with Perron in front. And we have seen him do that in practice, and that's what you'd like to see more of from number 10. Absolutely right. And that is exactly what the coaching staff has been talking about, what Craig McTavish is talking about. Got to get to those areas if you want to score. David Perron getting in front. Good puck movement and a quick shot to the net from the off wing. David Perron trying to move into positions of Inyak McCulloch. Battling with him. You want to push Devin Dubnik back. Big goaltender, you got to try to make him search for the puck. Boy, Jordan. Top 12 when it comes to face-off success. 56%. But it is Ryan Nugent Hopkins who has taken the most draws this season. Boy, Gordon wins that one. Puck bomb shot right on. Dubnik the same. Edmund Larson. Now gets it. To McMillan. He will dump that puck in. Vitaly giving chase. He gives him a bump, separates him from the puck, and that allows David Perron to move it to Kleffbach. Pass for Gordon, intercepted by Mikel Botcher. Stone just out of the reach of Doan, and Victor Faust will cover it up. So Devin Dubnik likes to get out of that net and help his team as much as possible. Let's go all the way back to November. Devin Dubnik changed the game with this play. Potential breakaway, Ryan Nugent Hopkins can't get to the puck. Later on, Arizona scores on that play. Earlier tonight, Devin Dubnik stops Jordan Everly from getting in on a breakaway on a very close chance. Devin Dubnik really helping his team. Every once in a while, the big man can really get out there, can he? His last win is December 16th. And it was in Arizona in overtime. Bacher with a backhand, Fox the save. 
Rebound sent wide and picked up there by Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins to Purcell. Tried to get it back to him, but Botcher was there. Outlet pass for Doan, picked off by Petrie. Yandel will try it again. This one doesn't make it through either. Shane Doan without a goal in his last 12 games. Gagne to an open wing as the Coyotes are making a change. Teddy Purcell turns in his own zone. A quick up for Hall. Hall, but hook, lost it. And that Foil is going to be... Protecting what matters most to you and your team. You are covered with the power of insight. The official construction insurance broker of the Edmonton Oilers. Sam Gagne scored a goal and looks up at the big screen. He goes, no, that's not a slash. You can't call that slashing. A little check from Jeff Petrie and I love Jeff saying, hey, Jeff, Merry Christmas. <laughs> In the box, Sam Gagne gets an excellent opportunity. Two minutes left to tie the game. Oilers got one shot on that last power play. McCulloch sends it the length of the ice. Victor Foss will give it to Schultz. He is up there with Petrie. Hey, Dreisaitl, Yakupov, and Perron. Yakupov, drop pass for Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl. Time seventeen. Got stopped by Hansel. At that time, this pass was intercepted by Hira. Schultz to Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl. Fending off, Ekman Larson got knocked out, got it to Yakupov, again a quick shot, and Dubik makes the save. Support by Neil Yakupov on this entry into the zone, so on the entry into the zone you're going to go wide, and then drive the puck deep, I like power plays that drive puck deep and then try to set up, don't set up high, Neil Yakupov just eludes his man, supports that puck really well, that's what you need, close quick support and then a quick attack to the net. Did he catch Devin Dubnik leaning one way or the other? Nugent Hopkins, Purcell, along with Everly, Hall, and Hunt. Everly back to Hunt at the point. He'll give it to Hall. Hall gives it right back to him. Delivers to Everly. Everly spins as Vermette and Gormley were watching him. Hall, Nugent Hopkins play catch. Hall. To Nugent Hopkins, back to Hunt, winds, lets a shot go. Dubnik the save, the rebound comes right to Jordan Eberle. He lost it to Connor Murphy, who sends it down the ice. Brad Hunt, two shots in the last game. This is his 10th game. Last game with 14 in the first shots period. for under a minute. 43 seconds left to go in the power play. As oh. Hall gets flattened by McCulloch, and another penalty coming up. And a great opportunity right now for the Oilers with under a minute to go in the period. 38 seconds left on Sam Gagne's penalty. This is a hit to the back as Zabinia McCulloch sees the numbers. You're just going to see that. That's a tough one for any defenseman because you want to be aggressive, you want to go, you want to make the hit. But at the same time, Taylor Hall's finding the puck. He turns, and it's one of those ones when once you're in no man's land that you've committed to the check, it's going to end up you, you in the box. Good thing that Taylor Hall's not hurt. Timeout being called. Try to set up a very important face-off in play. Shots now 12-8 in favor of the Oilers. And as Drew mentioned, 38 seconds of a five-on-three with 52 seconds left to go in the period. And after giving up two goals in the first five minutes, the Oilers with an unbelievable opportunity right now against a team that has given up more power play goals than any other. To feel good going into the dressing room after the first period. They've allowed five, the Arizona Coyotes, in their last two games. And again, you don't want to pick on Mike Smith or goaltenders, but you know your goaltender has to be your best best penalty killer. They are ranked 29th in the league. And the orders will go to work now. Boyd Gordon will take the draw against Antoine Vermette. Boyd yeah. Gordon goes down low. Stone trying to get it out. Great play by Hall to keep it in. Hall with the puck now. Taylor Hall. Hunt 
Nugent Hopkins, under pressure there from Ekman Larson, plays it back to Hunt. Hunt will give it to Hall. Gordon in front. Hall steps into a shot. Gordon looking for the rebound, but Dubnik's got it. What a play. That one might have hit Boyd Gordon because he looks like he's bent over in some pain. What a play by Taylor Hall. This is what you want to see from your best player. That effort, that individual effort, that second effort, that little extra, get out of your, your comfort zone. And then you're going to start working the puck around. It's going to go back to Taylor Hall, who's going to walk in once the puck goes low. I think this power play's got to run a little bit more crisply, though. Not so slow. Hunt fires a shot that Dubnik makes the save on. That's, that's what you want to see. You want to see Brad Hunt shoot the puck. That's why he's out on that power play. The first time he passed it up on, that, on the last shift, he passed up the opportunity. Good help on winning the draw. Get it back, get people to the net. Almost getting there in time. So once again, it's Gordon against Vermette. Gordon again wins the draw, nope. but they will do it again. Time. You want to make sure you check the clock here. And this one, Craig McTavish is pointing up at the official right now to make sure that the clock gets reset back. And sometimes they'll just leave the clock as is because it's too much of a pain to reset it. And they'll just tell the timekeeper, just hold for a second before he clicks it back on. Nine seconds left to go in the penalty to Sam Gagne as the clock now shows 23.1 seconds. Sam Gagne has 10 seconds left. This time, Vermette wins the draw. And this time, Stone sends it the length. Oops. And <laughs> Victor quickly pulled the stick up because it looked like he might play that puck outside the trapezoid. Five on four now for the next minute and 20 seconds. That'll carry over. The owners don't get a goal in the next eight seconds. Everly Wines fires a shot that misses the target, and that's going to do it for the period. A period that sees the Coyotes with a 2-1 lead, but the Oilers have a minute and eight seconds of power play time when the second period resumes. Well, the Edmonton Oilers on their way to the ice, and they've been making their way to a number of different places in the uh, spirit of Christmas. It started on the weekend, uh, Saturday, in fact. The Edmonton Oilers were at Laugh and Learn. Uh, Oscar Kleffbaum, along with the likes of Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Luke Gazdick, tough guy with a soft heart, though. And uh, what a haul of gifts as uh, Taylor left. Uh, his hands were full. But these gifts bought by the Edmonton Oilers, over $7,000 spent, and then they were distributed as the Edmonton Oilers on Monday made a number of hospital visits. An idea brought to Edmonton by Andrew Ferentz, and wow, look at this. A picture worth a thousand words. Uh, made Andrew Ferentz's day, made that little kid's day, and I'm sure it made the parents' day. Uh, nice work on the part of the Edmonton Oilers when they are not necessarily at Rexall Place, Drew and Kevin. All right, guys, thanks very much. That is wonderful. Let's take a look at the first period scoring summary brought to you by Worley Parsons Cord. Visit WorleyParsonsCord.com to find your place on our construction team. On that, sorry, taking a drink. Sam Gagne with a goal that was from a weird angle. It was a pretty funny start for Sam Gagne, but he bounces back from Erat and Hansel. Then Marty Erat with a deflection. That chased Ben Scrivens. Then Justin Schultz off of DJ Grumpy. And the shots were 13-8 as the Oilers came on in the latter stages of that period, especially with a couple power plays. So Justin Schultz didn't have a goal in 26 games coming in. He now has three goals on the year. All three of them have come at Rexall. And the Oilers will start this second period with a minute and eight of power play time. Benny McCulloch in the penalty box for boarding Taylor Hall. This is the second power play for the Oilers. Antoine Vermette won seven of the 13 face-offs for the Phoenix Coyotes, so it's key for Nugent Hopkins as he faces him to start this second period. From the draw, Ekman Larson will get control of it, and he will fire it down the ice. Victor Faust in relief of Ben Scrivens stopped all five shots he faced in that first period. Paul. Oh. Zips it in. Devin Dubnik slows it down. Everly gets to it. Checked by Stone. Nugent Hopkins in front along with Hall looking for a rebound. Instead, it is picked up by Doan. He starts away three on two shorthanded. Vermette. Long shot. Ekman Larson. Easy glove save for Victor Faust. And with Vermette right there preventing him from keeping it alive, 
The owners will have a face-off in their defensive zone. Well, Victor Foss coming in after the five-minute mark on the second goal by Martin Erat at Chase Ben Scrivens. And last time we saw Victor Foss, he was actually pulled in the game, and he came back to the bench and let his teammates know he wasn't very happy with the way they were playing. And now with Victor, he's in a position where yesterday he didn't look very happy coming off the ice in practice because I think he got the word he wasn't starting, expecting to start. So now he's got to really put in a performance. 23 seconds left to go in the power play. The Oilers trying to get out of their own zone. Leon Dreisaitl is out there, played five minutes and 20 seconds, and a couple of shots went three and one in the faceoff circle. And he has the puck right now. Dreisaitl across the blue line, moving in against Brandon Gormley. Circles the net, plays it back to Perron, trying to get it back to Schultz, just as McCulloch steps out of the box. The Oilers get two shots on that power play. They're 0 for 2. The Coyotes have not had a power play so far in this game. <laughs> They're 0 for 3 now. That's right, they did have a 5 on 3, so it's 0 for 3 for the Oilers. Gagne goes, Peter goes cross ice, trying to find Gagne. Instead, it is Perron bringing it back in with Boyd Gordon. Perron, back to the point it comes. Fain. At the blue line, Arcabello to the corner. Gordon and Perron, as Gordley ties up. Boy, Gordon, David Perron, comes away with the puck. Perron being watched by Tobias Reeder. Perron. As Clefbaum goes down low, Gordon has the puck behind the net. Now Clefbaum will give it right back. Arcabello to Gordon. Gordon. And it's hit by Hansel and knocked down. Gormley sends it around the boards, but Arcabello is sharp on it, keeps it in for the Oilers. Martin Hansel trying to work it out, and is Murphy with a puck. He will give it to Gormley, and Gormley with a quick up for Reeder. Checked by Clefbaugh. Martin Hansel, that's Arcabello. Boxer in there as well. Clefbaugh. Arcabello, pass for Purcell, goes off Doan, comes to Dubnik. He'll give it to Yandel, off the boards for Doan. Doan gets it out the center, where it's picked up there by the captain, Andrew Ferentz. Hall, checked by Bodker as he got the puck deep. Down the boards it comes, Petrie throws it right back at the net, missed on the glove side. Ferentz trying to keep it in, but it's for Met who gets it to Bodker. Checked by Petrie. Kenny Purcell in a crowd. Ferentz winds and fires a shot that goes wide. Botker and Arcabello joust. Vermette to Doan, lost it to Purcell. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> what do you want me to say? I was, I was thinking the same thing. I'm trying to come up with something to say, and it's wow is pretty much the only thing you can say. <laughs> Close quarters. <laughs> Oh, penalty coming up. Good guys to get a penalty, and he's also going to talk to Keith Yandel close up. Antoine Vermet. Luke Gazdag is, oh, come on, come on. This is penalty coming up as Luke Gazdag is going to get two. He goes in for the check. And this is very similar to the hit that Zbigniew McCulloch had on Taylor Hall. It's not hard, I know, but it's in the back. It's in the numbers. That's going to get a penalty, and that's going to draw two minutes, and you sit in the box. First power play for the Coyotes, who were one for four in the game against Vancouver. And it was Oliver Ekman Larson who got the power play goal against the Canucks, the only goal that the Coyotes scored in that game. Four for 15 in the season series against Edmonton. Hansel against Gordon. Hansel's second best in the dot in the NHL this season. You just give the title to Manny Maholtra. He's yeah, the only he's, guy, he's like 62%. Doesn't seem fair. From the draw, it comes back to the point. But unable to keep it in was Ekman Larson. Well, we said Keith Yandel is leading scoring for the Arizona Coyotes. He's very good on the power play. That's where he gathers up a lot of his points. 14 power play points this season. Just behind Shankirk Carlson. Sammy Vatnan, he's in there too. He is fifth among defensemen in points. He's got 19 on the season. And a good job by Gordon to force Yandel out of 
inside the blue line. Stats man extraordinaire David Moyer tells me it's 14 of 22 points. 14 of 22 points. He leads the team in points and assists. That's his official title, by the way. Yes. He's got a business card. Absolutely. Well, what Yandel does so well is he gets that team going out of their zone quickly, and his lateral movement is exceptional. When he gets the puck on the blue line, he's already moving laterally before he even gets the puck. And he starts looking for places to put the puck, either at the net or finding guys who are in a scoring position. He's got great vision on the ice, but his mobility is the key to his success. Yandel and Ekman Larson are on the ice for Met. Oh, that almost worked. With the Yandel off his skate comes to Arcabello. Arcabello right out in front for Nugent Hopkins, shorthanded just out of his reach. And there's the danger. You set up a play in the neutral zone, the face-off, it doesn't work, and it goes the other way for a nearest chance. The Oilers with two shorthanded goals this season. Ekman Larson brings it in. Intercepted by Ferris to Petrie. Petrie racing for it, but it's Bodger who gets to it. Bodger turns and gives it to Shane Doan. Back to Yandel at the point. Yandel, Doan on the half wall. Was in, fires a shot, and Foss makes the save. So here's the play in the neutral zone. Keith Yandel sets up on the wing. Michael Bacher's wide. You just want to kick it to him. But Marco Cabello, very quick, very smart. He intercepts it, and it goes the other way, and it's almost a scoring chance. Mark Arcabella heads up play, and that's what we talked to Mark about yesterday. You know, when, he, when he got the challenge of being a centerman in the National Hockey League, he said, I have to use my best attributes. And one of my best attributes is my head. I'm, I, I think the game well. Every level, he was told yeah. he was too small to play. He got that everywhere. He got challenged everywhere. And he's never used it and taken a bitter pill with it. He's used it as motivation to get better. Always seemed serious, but you actually got him smiling. I did, because we compared each other's height, and, and he's taller. <laughs> so he wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's out there now. I, 30 seconds left to go. I outweigh him by a ton. Oh, that's true. But you are a high-performance <laughs> athlete who needs his weight. Steal. Shot. Just missed at Arcabello. And a penalty coming up with 20 seconds left to go in the penalty to Luke Gazdick. A penalty killing for the Oilers forces Keith Yandel ahead of the box. Keith Yandel, who I just said, brings the puck up very well, and he does. But every once in a while, you make a mistake, a little turnover. Nice job by Ryan Nugent Hopkins to stay with his man. Support right there, aggressive, being up on the plate. We saw Ryan Nugent Hopkins with a good play last game using his strength. And there's Mark Arcabello again. Snaps it towards neck. Didn't miss by much, but they draw a penalty. And we got four on four, as you said, for 17 more seconds. Oh, they're going to check the clock, I think, right now. But I would think when you look at this, Dave Tippett is looking at this period, and I imagine that Todd Nelson is as well, going, can we get some sort of execution and structure back in our game? I think both coaches will be talking to the guys. Just guys, settle down, make some plays. Ed was scrambly there before oh. the penalty came up. Nobody had the puck on their stick for more no. than half a second. Need to drink espresso to call that. <laughs> Chip Chura won it. Thornley's got it. As Drew mentioned, we'll play four on four for the next 15 seconds. David Moss got it by Schultz, but he couldn't get it by Brad Hunt. Hunt, Schultz, Hall, and Everly for the Oilers. Hall, outlet pass for Everly, tipped. It comes to Brandon Gordley. Gordley will play it off the boards. Uh, there is Schultz, who took a shot from Chiptura as yep. Chiptura was changing. David Moss flips it for Vermette. Great play by Hunt. He gets the INT on that as he intercepted. The pass intended for Antoine Vermette. The order's on a power play now. They're fourth for the next minute and 16 seconds. Zone entries, zone entries. Moss and Vermette on the kill. This is Vermette with possession. Antoine Vermette circling the net. Checked by Brad Hunt. Hall's got it. And he's got some room. Hall to Purcell. Teddy Purcell wraps it around the boards. Nugent Hopkins waiting for it and lets it go. Work back to the point for Teddy Purcell. He'll throw it deep. Hall will pick it up near side. Taylor Hall trying to sweep it back to Schultz. Instead, it is Botker who sends it the length of the ice. That will allow both teams to change up. As Yakupov hops over the boards with Leon Dreisaitl. As Dreisaitl's got the puck now. Moving in. Leon Dreisaitl. Great speed. Stopped by Dubnik. Schultz moving in. He was backtracked by Hansel. 
But you can see Leon Dreisaitl, great burst of speed. Look at Yakupov dance. Dale Yakupov trying to go back door to Perron. Broken up by McMillan. Schultz with a puck now. Schultz, one-timer coming from Petrie. And deflected up out of play. He's seen some good stuff, though. Like, in the, like, little bursts of good things. And we've seen a couple times now. One from Martin Hansel on the back check. But from Leon Dreisaitl. Nice little bank pass. He's starting to move. Dreisaitl just drives the net. Terrific play by Devin Dubnik being aggressive. But Martin Hansel, who ran into Victor Foss, he gets on his horse. Now he's coming back. He's going to track Justin Schultz right there. Dreisaitl takes the puck off the boards. Good little indirect pass. And I love the fact that we see Leon Dreisaitl try to drive the net twice so far tonight. And he wins that draw. Louis DeBrest knows what he's talking he about. Does. Good for a young man to sit up there, a little bit tired, get some rest. Yakubov in front for Perron! And into the glove of David Devin Dubnik. And Yakubov a little bit frustrated. Just two seconds left to go in the man advantage. Talking to Todd Nelson today about Neil Yakupov. He's, he's, you, know, you asked him, what do you what do you do with Neil Yakupov? And that's kind of been a question that's been around for a while. I like this answer. You gotta stay positive with him. Yep. You gotta follow every detail, keep focusing on every detail of his game, but you have to keep positive, but to still hold him accountable. That's gonna be who's gonna uh, learn how to speak Russian. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be a little tough. But he shared a laugh with him a couple, a couple of days ago on the ice practice. They're talking about. Uh, um, Yakimov. Yakimov, uh, right. Back funny guy funny down guy, in. And they were laughing about him. So try to find some sort of connection. Gandel led on the penalty box. The Oilers with two shots on that power play. They are now 0 for 4. Doan centered it. Good play by Dreisaitl to pick it off. Almost picked off by Bodger, but it comes to Schultz. Drops it for Perron. A return feed stopped by Brandon Gorman. This is Bodger. Kel Bodger to Antoine Vermette. To the captain, Shane Doan. Bodker going to the front of the net. Doesn't get through. Stopped by Pitlick. Second chance opportunity off of Yakubov behind the net. Doan. Yandel snaps a shot. He scores. Keith Yandel makes it a 3-1 game for the Coyotes. Well, on this play, Keith Yandel, we already showed you what Keith Yandel does very well. Good drive through the middle, and that sets up everything down low. But as that play goes behind the net, Shane Doan just has patience. Yandel just slides to a position. You look where Yandel comes in on this play. He comes into an area where he knows that the pass can get to him. He doesn't go to the middle of the ice. He gets off a little bit, creates a passing lane, and Shane Doan makes it work. And it's on the stick, off the stick, off the Foss, into the net. Shane Doan's a road warrior. He's got four goals on the season. All four of them have come on the road. Doan and Vermette get the helpers at 7.54 of the second period. That's a guy, Kevin, taking a pass who makes himself the best option by just adjusting his path to the roof. Do the match. Boyers looking for a bounce back with this shift. It is Everly, Perron, and Gordon. Shane Doan now has three 880 assists in his career. Chip Chura starts the rush for Arizona. Pass off the stick of David Moss. Right to Andrew Ferris, who takes it from Reeder. Petrie, he takes a bump from Chip Chura. Reeder turns, gets it to Chip Chura. Chip Chura. With Reeder. And Gagne, Gagne hopping over the boards as Petrie puts it in past Connor Murphy. Hansel back to pick it up. Martin Hansel, big hit from Luke Gazdick. And a little chirping with Hansel going on up the ice, too. Introducing the new BF Goodrich KO2 tire. BF Goodrich, take control. Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's hockey game is Mott's Garden Cocktail. Ryan Nugent Hopkins came in with 733 draws, the most of anybody on the Oilers. And we asked him about, you know, do you get worn, worn down against some of these bigger guys? But he said for him, even though he has gotten stronger this year, it is about quickness. That has been the success for him. You've got to use what you can use. He can't go up against a guy like Martin Hensel and try to use strength. Hensel's just too, too big. 
He's got the leverage. Six foot six, 226 pounds. Nugent Hopkins was 12 and nine in that game against Dallas. Racing in against McCollum. Takes him into the boards. McCollum pushes it around the boards for Doan, and Doan starts away with Botker. Mikel Botker. Drop pass. Doan sips into a shot. He missed the target, and look at that puck come all the way down the ice, and Nugent Hopkins racing. Fights off McCulloch. Pass for Purcell. Ekman Larson was there. But there again, we see Ryan Nugent Hopkins use a little bit of strength to create that turnover. No icing as Botker and Schultz come together. Here's Gordon. Checked by Chip Chura, picked up there by Yandel. Oilers still out shooting the Coyotes, 17-11. But they trail on the scoreboard by two. Victor Foss. Conley gets it to Schultz, round the boards for Everly. Everly, just out of the reach of Boyd Gordon. He was checked by David Moss. Here's Keith Yandel. Stone. Content to just shoot it in. Tobias Reeder against Schultz, takes it away. Here's Reeder, sharp angle shot, stopped by Foss. Dreisaitl checks Reeder. Two countrymen come together. Perron with speed across the blue line. Dishes for Everly. Everly. Spin move. Backhand. Hit the side of the net. Everly goes and gets it again. The net comes off the moorings as Gormley and Perron were battling in front of Devin Dubnik. Keith Yandel gets his 23rd point of the season. The Coyotes lead by two. This week on Hockey Night in Canada, we have five choices of nationally televised games. Start your Saturday with Hockey Central Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Mountain. Then at 5 p.m. Mountain, it's the Red Wings Senators on CBC, the Jets Wild on City, and Capitals Penguins, Ovechkin versus Crosby on Sportsnet. Those games are followed at 8 p.m. Mountain with the Oilers visiting the Flames on CBC, while the Sharks take on the LA Kings on Sportsnet. Visit sportsnet.ca slash schedule for all the details. Our next action, Drew, when you yes. finish digesting all your turkey, will yes. be against L.A. on the 30th. What a game last night, Calgary Flames, oh. Los Angeles Kings. Johnny Hockey. Oh. Three goals, almost won it in overtime before the captain did. Mark Giordano was something special in overtime. 8.40 left to go in this second period. <laughs> McMillan around the boards for Connor Murphy. Murphy. To Crombeen. Crombeen to Vitali. Vitali is stopped right at the blue line. Pitlick lost it to Murphy. And Murphy shoots it in. Victor Foss to Petrie. Round the boards it goes. Martin Erat is there. Two points on the night for the former Red Deer Rebel. He and Sam Gagne, who's on the ice right now, also has two points. He got that goal that you talked about in the first period at the minute 44. His first goal against his old team. No icing on the play as Ekman Larson picks it up. The orders make a change. Get the Gordon line out there. Here comes Gagne. Shot doesn't make it through. He knocks down the captain, but it's picked up by Everly. Off the boards for Perron. A funny hop. Yeah, thick lines when yep. kind of banked off a little weird. Perron's got it back again. Hard pass for Everly was just behind him. He took it off his skate off the board. Now he centers. Ekman Larson between the legs for Erat. Erat under pressure. Perron's got the puck. Here is Clefbaum. Could not get all of it. And it's picked up by McCullough. McCullough weaves his way to his own blue line and then finds Gagne off his skate to Hansel. A weak shot. Hit Fane and goes into the corner. Boy, Gordon. Gets that puck out. That will allow the Oilers to get their top line on the ice. Mikel Botker. The pass for Vermette. That was broken up by Hall. Fane with a nice hit on Vermette. Botker. Watched it. Vermette's got it. Trying to center it. Didn't work because Oscar Kluckbaum was right there. Drew, we're back to scramble play, so you just take over. I have no money. This is all you. This is why you get paid the medium dollars right That's here. True. That's very true. This is it. I, I know that Arizona played last night, and they're playing a very structured four-check game, but the execution is not right now. They need to find some tape, tape passes. Both teams. Hall lost it to Bodger. Bodger to Vermette. Vermette moving in with Yandel. Vermette. Instead, put it off of Nugent Hopkins, right to Pinizzato, to Hall. Here's Hall, wrist shot, Dubnik the save, the rebound cleared by Tobias Reeder. 
That's what Louis DeBrus talked about with Gene in the in the first period. That the turnover factor is just it's too great if you want to be successful. And the Oilers really need to knock those off because they've got to come back in this game. Chip Jura forces a turnover, but Arcabello recovers. He'll give it to Schultz. Hunt to Schultz. To Pinizzato, tipped in. Arcabello and Gazda give chase. Murphy takes a look. Glad he got hit by Arcabello and not Gazda. Reader to the middle it goes as Gazda throws a hit on Tobias Reader. That's been a constant so far in this game. Arcabello wrist shot blocked by Connor Murphy, picked up by Kyle Chipchura. Moss over skates. Arcabello checks him. Moss fights him off. He's got McMillan with him, but back come the orders, and this is Gazda with Arcabello driving the net. Can't get it there. Murphy blocked it. Chip Jura's got it. Yep, he turned it over, got it back again. Then he turned it over. Devin Dubnik will give it to Brandon Gormley off the boards intended for McMillan. He got a piece of it. Foss is going to have to play it around the boards. McMillan breaks that up. Vitaly can't get it back to the point because it's picked off by Yakupov. Dry side. Gains the line. Leon Dreisen for Pitlick. Broken up by Yandel. In turn, Yakupov's got it. Nail Yakupov gets hit by Yandel. The double team as Vitaly comes in. Well, that situation with Dale Yakupov, he needs to get some help over there. He, once he gets turned in the corner, you want to see Pitlick and Dreisaitl get over to help. Outnumber the, the Arizona Coyotes in their zone. That's how you create that offensive zone time. 18 shots for the Oilers, 12 for the Coyotes. Brad Hunt, pass for Boyd Gordon. Everly against McCullough. Gordon in support. Gagne looking for the loose puck. Does come up with it. Sam Gagne plays it back to Benyuk McCullough. He'll use the boards. Can't get it out. Perron. Fights against McCulloch. Everly comes in to help out. McCulloch will get it to Ekman Larson, who spins, looks for it. Gordon's got it. Perron behind the net. David Perron wraps it right up top. Fame throws it towards the net, deflected by Everly. Fluff bomb pinches in, keeps it in for the Oilers. Battle in the trenches continues. Nugent Hopkins lost it to Martin Erat. Erat. Comes out with Gagne, flips it in. Gagne will give chase as Erath changes up. Nugent Hopkins gathers the puck. He skates by Vermette. Quick pass to Hall on the near side. Here comes Hall. Can't get by Mikel Bodker. Petrie, though, throws it towards the net. That shot doesn't get through. As Stone blocks it. Hall has options, gives it to Petrie. Back at the point it goes. Ferentz winds, fires a shot through traffic. That misses. Petrie again throws it towards the net. Blocked by Yandel this time. Hall gets knocked down by Stone. And it's picked up by Doan. He'll give it to Yandel who starts away. Hall has some complaints for the refs as he goes to the bench. Second time in this game he's been hit from behind. Ferentz on the far side. Pinizzato. Newton Hopkins trying to get it to the big Luke Gaston. Chip Chura in his own zone. Right up the middle, a pass intended for Tobias Reeder doesn't work. Here's Arcabella. Got two minutes and 22 seconds to go in the second period. Gaston to Arcabella. Arcabello stops. Good Chip Chura. Back the other way is Moss. Moss waits, fires a shot that Ferentz got in the way of. There's a quick shot, and Faust will cover up as Reeder let it go. Almost seven straight minutes without a whistle. We'll take a break. I'll catch my breath. We'll be back after this. <laughs> The Goals for Kids program is proudly sponsored by Sonovas. For every Oilers goal this season, Sonovas will donate $400 to Kidsport. To date, the Oilers have scored 75 goals for a total of $30,000. Justin Schultz has the goal tonight for the Oilers so far. I just jumped on your line. Is that a boy? I'm sorry. I just want to give you a little bit more of a break. You deserve it. Oxygen. Only 10 shots total, five each. 
in this second period. You said seven minutes without a whistle, almost yep. seven minutes without a whistle. The pace has been great. Oh. Edmund Larson with a high shot. McCulloch pinching in, drops it back for Hansel. Hansel will give it to Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson. Back to McCulloch, throws it towards the net, bouncing puck, scooped up there by Victor Faust, and he'll hang on. Climb higher than ever before with the new King of the Hill, the 2015 Ski-Doo Summit XT3 from Martin Motorsports. Well, has got five goals, Drew, in that game against Dallas. The last time they scored five was a game back in October against Carolina. But they have had four offense in the last couple of games. In fact, eight goals in their last two. And they've got to start putting more pucks in at Devin Dubnik. But it starts with being able to effectively get out of your zone. And Arizona, pretty stingy in that regard. They do a very good job of putting bodies in front of you. And that is the Dave Tippett way. He's the 30th coach in NHL history to coach 900 games. Hunt sends it around the boards, just out of the reach of Hall, kept in neatly there by Bodker. He'll get it to Doan, who's out there with Vermet. Everybody's down in the corner. Vermet will kick it back to Bodker. Bodker spins and gets away from Hall. Now he has to deal with Nugent Hopkins. Doan behind the net. Shane Doan. Up top, calling for it. Vermette between the legs. Here is Stone with a shot. Good save by Boston. No, it wasn't. It was Bodker who took the worst of that. And he is hobbling over to the bench. That stings. I think he got it in the back of the leg. Ouch. No padding, all flesh. Stone really stepped into a shot. We'll keep an eye on Bodker. At the start of this third period, Chipchura moving in now with 35 seconds to go. Turns, throws it through the blue paint. McCulloch pinching. Keeps it in for Tobias Reeder. Gets a little help from Chipchura. Reeder works it back to Ekman Larson. A wrist shot. Hit Hunt. Reader's got it again. Reader with a shot. Moss the save. David Moss picks up the rebound on the corner. Moss, drop pass for Ekman Larson. For Moss, a bouncing puck gets by Dreisaitl. Yakupov will give it to Hunt. Dying seconds of this period. Gagne slowly got it to Victor Faust. He's seen enough. He'll cover up. This is what you want from your guys. You got to go to the net, go to the net, go to the net. But sometimes, when you go to the net, that's what happens. You get cracked with a shot from your own guy. Friendly fire catching Kyle Botker. And that stings. Those ones just takes your breath away, and all you can do is just struggle to get off the ice. 2.1 seconds to go. And the orders, despite out shooting, the uh, Coyotes 18-50, David, give up the only goal in that second period to Keith Yandel, who leads his team in assists and points. Welcome back, everyone. Moments away from the start of the third period. Before we get to it, let's check the scoring summaries. Brought to you by Worley Parsons Ford. Visit WorleyParsonsCord.com to find your place on our construction team. First place, or first period, I should say, Gagne and e and Schultz made it 2-1 in favor of the Coyotes. And Keith Yandel with a nice pass from Shane Doan. Shots, not very many in the second period. 7-5, total of 12. 18-15, Oilers lead in that category, but the Coyotes lead on the scoreboard. Victor Boss, on in relief of Ben Scrivens, has given up one goal on 12 shots. And the third period underway. Arizona has been badly outscored in third periods this season. In fact, it's 39-18. Now the orders will try and keep that going and get themselves back into this hockey game. Yeah, John Shannon talked about it. We all talked about the fact that when the Coyotes get the lead, they play with men above you. They always stay above the play. Hard to get through the neutral zone, hard to create the speed. You might have to grind this third period out if you want to come up with a win. Yep, might. You will have to grind it out. Vermet wins the draw. Bodger. Well, backhanded in, he'll give chase. The puck comes right to the side of the net. Schultz clears it away to Teddy Purcell. Nugent Hopkins with speed on the right side. Given a bump there by Ekman Larson. Vermette gets the puck, leaves it in the corner for Ekman Larson. Almost given away, but here is Doan. Doan stops up, hits Kleckbaum. And Kleckbaum ends up with the puck. Oscar Kleckbaum. 
Jordan Everly. One-on-one -on -one against Yandel. To the middle it goes for Gordon. He was checked by Jim Chura. He got it to Tobias Reeder. He'll chip it and chase it himself. Get a little help there from David Moss. Who takes Clefbaum into the boards. Arizona, 2.21 goals per game. They have exceeded that tonight. But they gave up seven in the game against Vancouver last night. And you wonder if the Oilers can take advantage of a team that played on the coast last night. Yakubov to the middle. Intercepted by Erat, but there is Dreisaitl to carry on. He'll get it to Yakupov. Yakupov doing it himself as he backhands it in. Devin Dubnik around the boards. Gagne waiting for it. Checked up there by Andrew Ferentz. Cleared to an open wing, and Brandon Gormley's got it. Gormley to the corner. Enzel and Ferentz come together behind the net. Erat digging for it along with Gagne. Erat and Gagne. Two points, and they got those two points in the first period. Rysa stops up just inside the blue line, feeds Yakupov. Yakupov surrounded. Hansel gives it to Gagne. Gagne right back to the big man. This is Yandel. Weak shot. Faust handles it. He's going to hang on to it with McMillan cruising through. What do you do if you're the Edmonton Oilers? Yeah, that's, that's what you're looking at the bench, and this is where you're looking for your that resilience, that leadership to step out. Oh, big hit in the corner. From Bean on Clefbaum. McMillan in front, back to the point it comes. Stone can't keep it in there. He'll give it to Yandel. Fourth line on the ice for the Oilers. From Bean chips it in, races after it. Bain has the angle. Drops it for Clefbaum. Clefbaum lost it to Joe Vitale. Recovers and gets it back again. And we have seen the composure from Oscar Kleffbaum as he makes a nice pass to Arcabello. Arcabello can't get by Ekman Larson, though. Now, we also talked to Todd Nelson. He mentioned mental toughness. And this is where you need your mental toughness. You need to be do something uncharacteristic. You need to bounce back after a bad shift or bounce back after a bad period. You need to lead the way somehow. And it can't be one guy. It's got to be 20 guys. I'm jumping up in the play. Ekman Larson just flips it slowly down the ice. Coyotes want to make a change. Nugent Hopkins to Hall with Teddy Purcell. Back to the point. Schultz keeps it in. Gets by Hall. Hunt waiting for it. He'll get it to Nugent Hopkins on the far side. Here's Nugent Hopkins to Hall. He's checked by Chip Chura. Chip Chura trying to pin him against the boards. Does, but look at Nugent Hopkins come in and get the puck to Hall. Hall. Looking back door for Schultz, intercepted by Moss, and Moss flips it down the ice. Teddy Purcell talked about the ability of that line to cycle the puck. The Oilers and Molson Canadian are teaming up once again to bring the ultimate game experience to your favorite away game venues. Grab your friends and join us for Flight Night at Shank Sports Grill this Saturday for your chance to win a trip for two to watch the Oilers play in L.A. Sign up today at edmontonoilers.com slash game day live. December 27th, the Oilers will be in Calgary and then come home to play L.A. on Tuesday and we'll have that game for you. And icing the call against the Oilers. When you're playing against a team like the, the Coyotes, who, as I've mentioned several times, are very structured and very disciplined at staying above the play, those long passes will not work. You've got to make short passes. You've got to have close, quick support. You've got to try to move the puck up before they can get settled and get into their, their five men above the play. You've got to make sure that you start getting around the puck quicker. Not looking for those long stretch passes. Gormley shots, and that one goes in. And Oscar Clefbaum looks skyward. An own goal makes it four to one. Oscar turns and he's finding his man. He's looking for his guy coming to the net to the left of Victor Foss. 
And he finds his guy, but unfortunately, the puck hits him in the back. Oscar Kleffbaum, he's moving. He's got his guy. He sees his man coming in. He's looking for Martin Erat. And the puck goes way wide, looking for a deflection. Oscar Kleffbaum turns, finds Erat, and it goes right off his skate into the net. If the Oilers didn't have any bad luck, they wouldn't be having any luck at all tonight, goal-wise. And Brandon Gormley has two goals in the NHL. Both of them have come against the Oilers. He got his first NHL goal on December 16th here at Rexall. And Sam Gagne has got three points against his old team. Gormley again with a shot, deflected, and scores. Did I say he had three points? I meant he had four points because he just got his second goal. So Gormley and Gagne team up again. Again, off the face-off, dump the puck in, and just work for it. You're the Coyotes. And then quickly get the puck to the net with people going in the net. And this puck bounces and moves again on Victor Fuss. Get the draw, get it in deep, beat the first guys, and win that battle along the boards. The Coyotes do that, pop it back, head towards the net when you get the chance. Good support, back up top, towards the net, deflected. Sam Gagne knocks it, pucks out of the air. He has got, what would you say now? He's got four points, two goals and two assists, and those two goals came 13 seconds apart. Sam Gagne was a healthy scratch just a little while ago. He said it was a surprise, but again, another guy who takes that as motivation to be better. He now has five points in his last four games. So Gormley's got two points. Uh, it's great hands. And you know, when you, when you see pros do that, uh, we get to see them in practice. These are things that they work on all the time. Knocking pucks out. Here they go. A dump in again, trying to win the battle on the boards. Moss checks Dreisaitl, but Dreisaitl fights him off, and the Oilers can get it out. This is Hunt. Long pass, caught up on the skates of Yakupov. Dreisaitl controls, gets it back to Schultz. Five guys, one, two, three, four, five, and the on again. Dreisaitl brings it in against Gormley, who squeezes him off, separates him from the puck, and allows David Moss, who avoids a check from Pitlick. Reader, wide on Hunt, snaps a shot, Foss the save, He'll hang on to it and get the Bronx cheer from the folks here at Rexall. So, this is what you want to do. This is something the Oilers worked on. This is a hinge. Bring the defenseman up, support it, go back to the D and go to the other side. You draw the four checkers over to one side, create some space on the wide side, a weak side, and then get the puck in deep. Unfortunately, you can't maintain that possession, but that's how you beat that play in the neutral zone. Bring the four checkers to one side, go back the other side. And you, the Oilers actually worked on that particular play uh, the other day in practice. It's called a hinge. Taylor Hall. Fires it in. Ekman Larson gets the puck out again. Bodker lost it to Hall. Circles back in his own zone. Hall gets to the blue line. And then meets McCulloch as the puck drifts towards Dubnik. Coyotes want to make a change. Second half of back-to-back -back games this year. The Phoenix Coyotes come in with a record of 2-3. and three. Rambin tips it in. McMillan gets it to him again. He was checked by Arcabello. The battle in the corner ensues. Arcabello gets knocked down. The puck comes to Perron. Slips a pass to Everly. Joining is Fain, but Mark Fain could not stay on side. Rogers, Oilers Hockey, right here on Sportsnet. It's been a tough game tonight on the part of Craig McTavish and the Edmonton Oilers. There was another game going on earlier today at McCauley Arena, about 10 minutes from Rexall. It's the McCauley Cup, started back in 2011 by the Edmonton Police Services, and they play a game versus about 50 to 60 kids from the area. $61,000 raised from this event. It'll be used to renovate the arena, player boxes, new boards, and netting. So another good Christmas cause going into the holiday break. Is there anything better than playing outside? No. The ODR, man. That's, That's where great. you learn. And you, you know, you, if you look at any, tell any kids, so there's so much structure 
in, in hockey nowadays. And there's so much structure with kids' hockey nowadays. You got kids playing hockey 365 days a year. Get out of there, go out to the ODR, and have some fun. That's where you're really going to be able to perfect your skills. And you know, sometimes you don't, you have more than just 10 guys on the ice. Yeah. Everybody shows up, and you got to stick handle through 15 guys. We're playing, man, and you just, it's, it's fun. Gene said he used to do that on a regular basis. Stick handle through yeah, 10 guys? Yeah. yeah. It was a knee injury that prevented him from getting to the pros, I understand. And, and, he, was, and he was missing a talent as well. Yes. Good yeah. A little bit more. Pain to Everly. 20 shots for the Coyotes, 18 for the Oilers. We've got just over 13 minutes left to go in the final game of the series. Pernal from a sharp angle hit the back of the net. Dreisaitl back to Petrie. He'll get it to Perron off his skate that comes right to Tobias Reeder. We've talked about Dreisaitl's jump. What do you have thought of his game, Coach? I, I really liked it. I think that he learned something upstairs watching, and you got to credit the coaching staff for giving him that feedback and saying, this is what we want from you, Leon. This is what we're hoping for you, Leon. Obviously, he watches video. We know that, that he watches video. We've seen him on the plane. And what he did, he came up, again, took this, the healthy scratch's motivation, said, how can I get better? Listen to his coaches. Talking to the coaches, they say that Leon is a very coachable kid, but I like the fact he's had a little bit more spark in his legs. The two drives to the net were, were impressive. He has won over 63% of his faceoffs tonight as well, as Petrie lets a long shot go, Dubnik the save. And the puck comes down into Oiler territory, and there is Jeff Petrie to pick it up. I'd add one more thing. He's made his line mates better tonight, too. Cleft ball, back to Petrie. Oscar Kleffbaugh gets by Doan, drops it back for Petrie. Here's Yakupov. Quick pass to Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl, centering attempt, blocked by Gormley, gets it back again, hit the back of the net, the puck is sitting there, and we get a whistle, and then Dreisaitl doing a little pushing and shoving as well. Good. In there with Nail Yakupov. Century Casino, welcome to the Winner's Zone. Leon Dreisaitl loves to make plays off the backhand, and that's a unique trait for that big centerman. But then a little extra pushing and shoving. Neil Yakupov in there, Leon Dreisaitl in there. They're showing some, some gumption, something to uh, get their team going. This has been in line tonight with Pitlick, Yakupov, and Dreisaitl have been good. Kevin Dubnik with a glove save, and he'll hang on to it. Martin Hansel picks up two points. He gets the assists on both goals in the third period. Well, and their face-offs were key on those goals, just like the face-off was key on that shot to the net right there. Again, Boyd Gordon with that tough technique to beat. Martin Hansel, the second-best face-off man in the NHL. Crombine in a race with Petrie. B.J. Crombine and Petrie in the corner. Gordon trying to help out. Puck comes free. Schultz has got it. Joe Vitale to McCulloch. Wine snaps a shot, and that one deflected off Crombine and went just wide. Luke Gaston, along with Gordon, get the puck free and get it to Jeff Petrie. And this is not a shot at Luke Gaston, but Matt Hendricks is another guy that can provide spark when a team is down. He is not feeling well. And, and, and Luke is trying to do that. Absolutely. He, was, he went to the body. He was a guy that was trying to be a physical force. But the, the game, just because of the, the nature of the goals, has just gotten away from the Edmonton Oilers. Sam Gagne, his third career four-point night. Manzo trying to get it back to the point, but instead it's intercepted by Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins with Hall, crisscrossing inside the blue line. Hall snaps that shot, and it missed the target. And all the way down the ice it comes. Seen this a couple of times yeah. with the owners coming down that way, taking a shot, and having the puck end up in their own end. Elliot Friedman talked about it at the end of the first period on the power play where he took the shot and went all the way out of the zone. Those ones just, you know, I know we say it all the time, it's got to hit the net, but those ones you kind of want just thump the pads if you've got a guy driving there. You don't want to try to pick the corner from that angle. Stone 
Ahead to Moss. He will give it to Chiptura. Chiptura drop pass. Yandel snaps a shot, and that one goes high. Murphy waiting for it on the near side. He'll play it behind the net. It hopped over the stick of Chiptura. Right to Mark Fain. He'll get it to Everly. Everly to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins right back to Jordan Everly. Across the blue line. Dishes off for Perron. He lost it. Moss. Chiptura. Checked by Clefbaum. He'll play it right back to Foss. Calmly gives it to Mark Fain. Everly. Chips that puck in. Connor Murphy. Bumped by Arcabello. Perron. Hit Gormley. We talked to Mark Arcabello, too, about his physical play. Not the biggest guy, but he will throw hits. Petrie can't control that one. And here comes Antoine Vermette. Two on one with Shane Doan. Vermette to Doan. Couldn't get that one time. Vermette trying to get it to Doan, who hasn't scored in a dozen games. Justin Schultz played that pretty well, actually. He was enough, he was enough of a distraction for Shane Doan that he couldn't get anything on that shot. Pitlick, Dreisaitl, and Yakubov. On the ice now, Pitlick throwing his weight around. He has done that very well for the Oilers. He had six hits in that game against Dallas. Tyler doesn't fool around. He knows that he has to come out with some grit and some energy and do exactly that. He is averaging about four hits a game. Rogers, Oilers hockey, last game before Christmas. Right here on the net. Tonight's outstanding play is brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. On our outstanding play, it's this play right here. The pass by Shane Doan and the shot by Keith Yandel. The reason this is such a good play is how smart both players are. Yandel, the path he takes to get open, and Doan, the patience and recognition to find the right guy at the right time. And of course, the finish by Keith Yandel is a spectacular. That was the third goal for the Phoenix Coyotes. They have added two in the third period. Gormley and Gagne just 13 seconds apart. And that's where we sit with 8.43 left to go in regulation time. The shots are even. Each team has had 20. Yandel flicks it in the opposite corner. Foss to Pitlick. Dreisaitl is checked by Gagne, who gets it to Stone. Stone around the boards as the Coyotes make a change. A chance for Pitlick. Pitlick across the blue line. His shot. Walker save. Yakupov looking for the rebound. That was cut off by Connor Murphy. And back the other way comes Kyle Chipchura. Chipchura. To the middle it goes. Hunt to Gaznik. Off his stick. Gormley. And played that to David Moss, who was a couple of feet offside. Gino. Shop at Safeway today. You could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts. You could win an all-inclusive trip for two to a Grand Bahia Prince Bay Resort, courtesy of redtag.ca, where Canada shops for great travel deals. And speaking of deals, how about this jersey for Gage Latimer, nine years old. Wow. Big fan of Devin Dubnik uh, in Phoenix earlier this year. He had Devin sign it. Uh, half as an order, half as a Coyote, so it was guaranteed win night for him either way. Very nice. Great hit by Pinizzato on Gormley. Kipchura out in front. It gets by him. Pinizzato and Moss come together. Keep our eye on Steve Pinizzato. He's already dropped like the glove at once. And a penalty coming up to Chipchura as he took Schultz down in the corner. And the Oilers will get their fifth power play. They have generated a total of eight shots with a man advantage, but have not been able to solve Devin Dubnik. Kyle Chipchura arguing this call, but you see the stick just takes the edge of the skate of Justin Schultz and just slips it underneath a little bit and he's over over edges if there's such a thing and then down he goes. Actually when you, you wouldn't over edge, you'd lose your edge. And that's what he did. 18 power play for the Oilers in the season series against the Coyotes. They have scored in twice as that puck goes out of play. Moss is going to hand somebody an early Christmas present as he flips it to the guy right behind them. He took the puck and called him a bum. No, he <laughs> wouldn't do that. Yeah, all of a sudden, he's become his favorite player. Absolutely. Always been a Moss fan. <laughs> Nugent Hopkins against Joe Vitale. Vitale wins it. Ekman Larson gets it by Everly. And the Oilers will regroup. 
Foss can leave it there for Hunt. Locks it to Vitale. Vitale and McMillan up front on the penalty kill as Everly. Drop pass for Hall. Hall gets to the blue line, takes a hit from McMillan. Dubnik plays it, but he gave it right to Hall. Fires a shot. Another blocker save for Devin Dubnik. Hall's got the puck again. Hall back to the point. Hunt moves to the middle. Gives it to Hall. Hall snaps a shot up high. Dubnik the save. The rebound comes right in front of Devin Dubnik. And he will cover it up with Teddy Purcell and Nugent Hopkins right there. The game review is brought to you by The Brick, saving you more on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. What a game for Sam Gagne coming back to his old team. He's got four points, third time he's done it. Ben Scribbins allows two goals in the first three shots. One of them, I'm going to give him a break. The first one, though, really set the tone of the game. And the, sh the winless streak, the long time without a win, continues for the Oilers. It's tough right now. Oh, almost scored on himself right there. That's one from that. Bouncing puck comes to Faust. And he will leave it there for Hunt. Just over a minute of power play time remaining for the Oilers as Nugent Hopkins goes to Hall. He was checked by Doan. Hunt keeps it in at the blue line to Everly. Everly. Back to Hunt. Hunt winds, fakes the shot, gives it to Hall. Hall to the middle for Nugent Hopkins, looking for a tip. But it's sent down the ice by Gormley. The Coyotes came into this game on a five-game winning streak here in Edmonton against the Oilers. They had only won two of their last 12 games. Both of them against the Edmonton Oilers. Now it's 3-13. and 13. It's up there, it's in it. ah, Potential 3-13. and 13. Here's Dreisaitl. Pass for Petrie just out of his reach. The played around the board. That's when Larson intercepts and sends it the link. Oilers now with 24 shots. Schultz to Perron. David Perron across the blue line. Dishes to Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl from the corner. Perron gives it to him. He gives it right to Schultz. Schultz walks in. Slap pass to Perron. The penalty is over as he tries to bake it in. It sits on the blue paint. Oh, and Neil Yakupov can't buy a break. Nifty idea. Neil Yakupov and David Perron trying to get together for a goal, but Dubnik shuts the door. We'll be back after this. Rogers Oilers hockey on the net. On the ice and behind the scenes with the Chicago Blackhawks and the Washington Capitals is featured in episode number two of the road to the 2015 Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic. Watch it later this evening on Sportsnet West, and I will be after our Oilers telecast at 9 p.m. Mountain. Our stats man, Dave Moyer, I think is working that game, aren't you? The Winter Classic. Are you getting to do any outdoor games this year? You're getting to do one. All right. Oh, yes, he'll be in San Francisco oh, for the Levi show. Stadium. Oh, yeah, I won't have to be wearing the parka. With the L.A. Kings sporting the white pants. Yeah, it'll be different. Louis Jean and I got to do a game in Hamilton between the Marlies and the Bulldogs. It was a little cooler than it will be in San Francisco. Even the big polar bear was wearing a coat that day. <laughs> That's what makes it real special, I think. This is Yakupov against Yamba. Out in front it comes, but Chiptura is there to clear it away. Chiptura gains the line and takes oh. a hit from Yakupov, went right into the order bench. The door was open, and Chiptura not happy. Gazda coming in. Yakupov gave Chiptura a shot just as the line change was happening, and Chiptura ended up being an oiler for a second. So Neil Yakupov He's going to finish the check. It's actually a little bit late. In fact, it's completely interference. <laughs> and a little shot on Chip, Kyle Chipchira, and the bench gate was open. And right away, Luke Gazdick came over and stopped things. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a nasty little shot. But if the gate wasn't open, the would be, you know, nobody would think twice about it. Chipchira would have just came back, but Kyle's okay. He wasn't going at a high rate of speed, which was good. He would have been injured if that would have happened. Second power play for the Coyotes. Martin Erak, along with Hansel and Gagne. Here's Gagne, two cracks, three cracks, Foss the save, puck loose. 
cleared by Petrie. And that one goes out of play. But it was tipped before it went out. Sam Gagne, 2007. Most points from that class. Patrick Kane, Jacob Voracek, who has just absolutely oh. taken off this year thanks to Claude Giroux and how much he's made him, the kind of players made him. Jamie Benn. Really? So when you look at the London Knights wow. and a line from the London Knights, you're looking at Gagne and Kane. I shows you I should kind of work on my draft a little bit. Jamie Benn was 129th overall. Wow. 302 points for Jamie Benn. Sam through the, though, now, was he hurt yeah. that year? That I don't draft know. Year? That is phenomenal. Oh, penalty coming up again. It's going to be a high stick. It's going to be to, I think, Sam Gagne. Comes with a minute 41 right. left to go. And the penalty to Nail Yakupov. So the only other guy in this game that wears number 10 is also yep. going to sit. I thought it was Sam, but Marty Erat saying, me? Is Are you sure it's me? It was not my fault. He pushed my hand, his hand under my hand, and I hit him in the face. So right by the boards. Oh, it's an elbow. Oh, the right elbow. Watch the right elbow. Bang. You see Oscar Kleffbaum's head snap back as Martin Erat tries to create a little space for himself. Well, that was a little Gordy Howe elbow right there. Yeah. He is in the box, so we'll play four on four for the next minute and 41. And then the Oilers are going to get a brief, brief power play. 4.23 left to go. From that wins the draw, McCulloch. Shane Doan plays it back to Vienna. McCulloch avoids the hit from Nugent Hopkins. Excellent Larson to the middle for Vermette. Vermette lost it. Nugent Hopkins and Everly are up front. Schultz. Neat little pass there to Hunt. Trying to find Nugent Hopkins. He was checked. Doan could have been by himself. He gathers the puck up now and starts in. Shane Doan. Lays it back to Ekman Larson, a pass to McCulloch. McCulloch. Can't get it by Nugent Hopkins. He and Petrie, great quick sticks. Schultz to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins. Schultz up top for Ferentz, off his skate. And it comes right to Hansel. Hansel moving in with Gagne. Hall lost it to Hansel. Everly in supporting. Gagne with the puck now. Gagne backhand. Bust. The save. Hansel the rebound almost put it home. Gagne plays it back. This is Yandel. He'll go cross ice. Stone wasn't expecting it. Gagne with it now. Gives it to Stone. Stone to the corner. Hansel. Look at Yandel jump up in the play. Centered in front. Gagne will pick it up. He's got Ferentz watching him as it comes to Yandel. He couldn't get it to settle down, and then the centering pass went off ball. Penalty is over. Yakubov's back on the ice. 14 seconds of power play time remaining for the Oilers. And here is Hall right down the middle. Dishes to Yakubov, cross ice, dry saddle, shaft, and Dubnik makes the save. Sam Gagne, four points already. And the Coyotes have been looking for Sam to have a breakout game, something that's going to spark the rest of his time with the Arizona Coyotes. He's had a terrific game tonight. And Taylor Hall brings the puck up. Will play across the blue line. Leon Dreisaitl coming in late, but Devin Dubik gets across in time. The key on that play is Dreisaitl just timing that entry into the zone. His entry, the third guy into the zone. One another face off. The penalty is over. Erat's out of the box. Coyotes now 0 for 6 with a man advantage. And 2 for 19 in the season series. Perron, back to the point. Clefbaum waits for traffic. Takes the shot. Steered aside by Devin Dubnik. Martin Erat plays it off the boards, and Reeder picks it up. Tobias Reeder snaps a shot, and that one goes out of play as Petrie again got a stick there. I like those little plays off the boards. You want to play fast, you've got to use the boards as your sixth man out of the ice. And you can get pucks behind defense there. If your guys are smart and skating off the puck like Tobias Reeder is, smart little play. Step off the boards a little bit. That'll draw the defenseman off. Bank it off the boards. Let the man skate in behind it. Well played for a chance on net. 
Arizona came into this game ranked 24th on the road. Looks like they're going to get their seventh victory away from the desert. And Dave Tippett loves coaching against the Edmonton Oilers. Came into the game 19-2-3. McMillan to Vitale. That goes wide from Bean. To Vitale behind the net. He'll come back to Yandel. Yandel and Stone at the point. Yandel sifts it through. Opportunity for Crom Bean. And he may have caught a piece of the post with that shot. A little bit on the outside, I think. Gaston at center. Chips it in. He'll go after it himself. Dudnik waiting for it. Gaston will get there first. Stone ties him up. Supporting his Everly. Snapping a shot. It is Arcabello, and he put it just wide. Clefbaum throws it towards the net. That one didn't get through. The Coyotes sixth in the league in block shots. And offside is the call. As that was gloved to head, so we get a whistle. A frustrating night for the Edmonton Oilers. And I think it's the nature of the goals and when, how they went in that just changed the complexion of this game. When you look at the goals, how many of them, especially early, were hard-earned goals? Came too easy for the Coyotes. And then that just takes you right out of your game plan. I don't care what kind of team you are. Good team, bad team, in the middle. Those kind of goals will just disrupt everything. Marcabello shot. That one misses. Stumbling was Kleppbaum. It gets by him. Coyotes are going to win their 12th game. Five of those victories have come against the Oilers. And it's either been an offensive display by the Coyotes or very tight. They've had two 2-1 two games in this series, including a game that went to overtime. But in those other three, the Coyotes have scored 7, 5, and 5. A little chop. David Perron over with Hunter Murphy. Hunter Murphy. And I don't think anything's going to come of it. No. As the linesmen get in there quickly. Just one glove drop. Now a stick. The guy is just mad. And the uh, gate open, so Murphy's night is done. He's going to head off. Perron will do the same. The play of the game is brought to you by Rogers. Live like never before. Now, when you look at this play, it's not that outstanding, but what it is, it's the game changer right here. It set the tone for the night. A simple drive wide with guys driving to the net. A sharp angle shot that should not go in, but that was early in the game. It was an easy goal. It changed the game entirely for the Coyotes and especially for the Edmonton Oilers. That's why it's our play of the game. Sam Gagne was the guy who started it all, and he finished it too. He got the first goal and the fifth goal, and two helpers in between. Murphy and uh, Perron. And the season series between these two teams is also done. A shot. Dubnik makes the save. And Devin Dubnik runs his record to a perfect 3-0 against his old team as he now has seven victories on the season. And the Arizona Coyotes snap a three-game losing streak on the road. And after some games where you saw it, you thought you saw some Oilers take the step forward. Tonight, you walk away from this game before Christmas with more questions and a step backwards. 5-1, the final here. So the hockey game is done. Time to think about that big jolly man coming down the chimney.